Ashes to ashes, rock and roll to dust. Smoke, black, acrid, a shroud against the setting sun. Flames danced, hungry, devouring the wooden shack. Inside, a figure remained motionless, a silhouette against the inferno. Jax, lead singer of the gears, or what was left of them. His eyes, the color of storm clouds, reflected the blaze. No fear, no regret, just a weary acceptance. The fire crackled, a mocking laugh at the demise of dreams, of glory, of the gears. A guitar chord, distorted, echoed from a shattered speaker lying amidst the debris. A fitting soundtrack to their ruin. Jax reached for a half-burnt photograph. A younger him, cocky grin, flanked by his bandmates. Danny, the bassist, all sharp angles and simmering rage. Mickey, the drummer, wild-eyed, a whirlwind of chaotic energy. And then, Lily, the keyboardist. Her ghost still haunted him, a melody he could never quite forget. He dropped the photo into the flames. It curled, blackened, then vanished. Just like the gears, ashes to ashes, rock and roll to dust. He walked away without looking back, the firelight painting his silhouette against the dying day, a grim monument to a band consumed by its own fire. Five years earlier, the air crackled with anticipation, thick with cigarette smoke and cheap beer. The cramped club pulsed with the raw energy of a crowd hungry for a taste of something real, something raw, something like the gears. They exploded onto the stage, a sonic Molotov cocktail. Danny, a whirlwind of bass lines, his face a mask of fury. Mickey, a dervish behind his drum kit, pounding out a rhythm that resonated in your bones. Lily, ethereal at her keyboard, weaving magic with her fingers, her voice a siren's call. And then there was Jax. Leather jacket, ripped jeans, a sneer playing on his lips. He stalked the stage, a caged animal, his voice raw with emotion, spitting out lyrics that spoke of rebellion, of heartbreak, of the raw, untamed spirit of youth. They were good. Damn good. Each note, each beat was a punch to the gut, a shot to the heart. They weren't just playing music, they were living it, bleeding it onto the stage. The crowd went wild, caught in the maelstrom, swept away by the sheer chaotic brilliance of the gears. Their rise was meteoric. One minute they were playing dive bars, the next they were headlining festivals. The music industry, always hungry for the next big thing, descended upon them like vultures. Record deals, world tours, their faces plastered on magazine covers. The dream had become reality. But fame, like a fickle mistress, came with a price. The pressure was immense, the lifestyle relentless. Cracks began to appear in their once unbreakable bond. Danny, fueled by a cocktail of insecurity and resentment, clashed with Jax's increasingly erratic behavior. Mickey, lost in a haze of substances, struggled to keep up, and Lily, Lily was the heart of the band, her talent undeniable, her spirit infectious. But she was also fragile, battling her own demons. Jax watched as the light in her eyes began to dim, replaced by a shadow he couldn't reach. The music, once their salvation, became a battleground. Creative differences escalated into bitter arguments. Rehearsals were fraught with tension, the air thick with unspoken resentments and simmering anger. The music, once raw and passionate, became forced, the joy replaced by a mechanical precision that lacked soul. The fans felt it too. The energy, the spark, was gone. Their music, once a refuge, a battle cry for a generation, now rang hollow. The critics, always eager to tear down what they had once praised, sharpened their knives. Behind the facade of success, the gears were falling apart. The dream was turning into a nightmare. The music a dirge for their dying brotherhood. The weight of their imploding world fell heaviest on Jax. He felt responsible, the captain steering their ship towards the rocks. The guilt gnawed at him, amplified by the substances he increasingly relied upon to numb the pain. He tried to reach Lily, to recapture the connection they once shared, both on and off stage. But the more he tried, the further she seemed to slip away the light in her eyes flickering like a candle in the wind. One night, after a particularly disastrous gig, fueled by a cocktail of self-loathing and tequila, he confessed his feelings. But his words, clumsy and desperate, only served to push her further away. 
The next morning, Lily was gone, vanished. No note, no explanation, no goodbye. Just an empty space where her keyboard usually sat and a deafening silence that echoed the emptiness in Jax's soul. The band was finished. The record label, sensing blood in the water, dropped them as quickly as they had signed them. The fans moved on, their fickle affections already focused on the next shiny new thing. Danny and Mickey, united in their grief and anger, blamed Jax for Lily's disappearance. The accusations were like punches to the gut, each one reinforcing his own self-loathing. He didn't try to defend himself, he knew deep down that they were right. Section 7. Ghosts of Babylon The years that followed were a blur. Jax, haunted by Lily's memory and the ghosts of his past, drifted from one dead-end town to another, drowning his sorrows in a haze of booze and bad decisions. The music was gone, replaced by a deafening silence that screamed his failure. He was a ghost, haunting the ruins of his own life, a pale imitation of the man who had once set the world on fire. He heard whispers of Danny and Mickey, trying to rebuild their lives, their careers, without him. He wished them well, but a part of him, a dark, twisted part, resented their ability to move on, to find some semblance of peace while he remained trapped in the wreckage of their shared past. Section 8. One Last Song Then one rainy afternoon, a crumpled letter arrived, addressed in a hand he hadn't seen in years. Lily's. She wrote of her struggles, of the darkness that had threatened to consume her, of her need to escape the chaos that had become their lives. She wrote of forgiveness, of understanding, of her belief that they were all victims of their own success, of the beast that fame had become. And she wrote of a song, a melody that had haunted her for years, a song that she believed could only be brought to life by the gears. The letter was a lifeline, a beacon of hope in the darkness he had been inhabiting. He knew what he had to do. He had to find his bandmates, to seek their forgiveness, to see if they could, for Lily, for themselves, recapture the magic that had once been the Gears. Section 9. The Plunge. He found Danny and Mickey in a rundown bar, their faces etched with the scars of their shared past. The reunion was awkward, filled with unspoken words and bitter memories. But as Jack spoke of Lily, of her letter, of the song, he saw a flicker of something in their eyes. Hope? Forgiveness? Or maybe just the faintest echo of the passion that had once bound them together. They agreed to listen to the song, a haunting melody that spoke of redemption, of second chances, of the enduring power of the human spirit. As the last notes faded, a silence fell over the room. It was broken by Mickey, his voice rough with emotion. Let's do it, he said, one last time, for Lily. Section 10, Genesis. The recording session was cathartic, a purging of demons, a reckoning with their past. The music flowed through them, raw, powerful, infused with a depth and honesty that had been missing for far too long. It was as if Lily was there with them, her spirit guiding their fingers, her voice blending with theirs. As the sun rose, casting long shadows across the studio, they listened to the final playback. It was more than just a song. It was a testament to their survival, a message of hope to anyone who had ever dared to dream and stumbled along the way. The gears were back, battered, bruised, but not broken. They had stared into the abyss and emerged, changed, but not destroyed. This was not the end, it was a new beginning. Genesis.